Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Thursday. It's April 21st, and just looking at the daily chart here real quick, I think we got our answer here as to whether or not we were going to bounce out of here. Not very pretty at all. Um, we'll have to see if the support holds. We get a triple test and maybe then go higher. This is a fairly clear channel working lower here, so we may attempt to make a new low before we go higher and we may come down here and test this original low if this uh, support uh, previous resistance is now acting as support does not hold so um, really ugly day started out looking like we were going to get some follow through on the um, rally here but uh, in the end brutally ugly downtrend day these are the kind of days you wait for and hope for to try to take advantage of uh, runners and easy entries at the key entry points and there's quite a few today so i'm not going to beat around the bush i'm going to flip over that chart and uh, it is thursday so this wraps up our week no chart lessons on fridays um so we'll wrap up this week and we'll, we won't be back until monday but um anyway let's flip over to that 2000 tick intraday chart and go from there Okay, real quickly before we get into the chart and the trades here, there's quite a few of them today, big downtrend. But I mentioned yesterday about the forum issue. I was able to restore the forum. Uh, I got a couple of emails from people offering to help, and I appreciate that. But uh, as soon as I got off the video, I got to work on it and quickly figured it out, found some help with it, and uh, got it going. So uh, thanks to y'all that sent me uh, an email offering to help. I really appreciate it. Turned out it was, uh, the data was not gone, it just, uh, there was some a glitch in there that I created myself, and uh, I just had to figure out how to restore it, and I was able to do that, so thank goodness we didn't lose it. Um, I think there's probably two plus years worth of uh, posts, and a lot of good information in that forum, so it's a great resource for studying, and uh, picking up extra facts and getting input from other people and so forth that are actually looking at what we're looking and not just traders. So um, we do monitor that and try to keep the message on track. That's the reason I prefer a forum and not an open live because you people can walk away with too many with the wrong message too often in a live format. And there we can go back and correct and change and delete if we need to we don't delete very often occasionally we might delete something if it's truly off track or something but uh, very rarely usually we'll just uh, comment and straighten people out and keep people on the right track uh, doesn't happen often believe it or not we got some really good chart readers in our group and some people that are doing really well is uh, also so it's pretty positive but anyway uh, the forum has been restored we did lose one category and that was my fault because i don't want to spend a lot of time on this but just real quickly when i recreated the forum for some reason it made every category got it made a with when it restored the good category it also created a a, a mirror category with nothing in it and I thought I could just delete the mirror categories, but when I deleted that, it deleted not only the mirror category with nothing in it, it also deleted the data. And I don't think I'm going to be able to restore that one category. So I stopped right there and didn't delete any more of the blank categories. You'll still see them there at the bottom of the list, uh, but just ignore those if you're a member of our forum or use our forum. Um, I'm going to try to figure out how to get rid of them, but at this point, I'm not exactly sure. So I got to continue to do some more research, but I had to catch up on my other stuff. I spent all day yesterday piddling with that, uh, trying to get that restored, and I was here late. And so uh, I just hadn't had time to do anything else with it. But I will try to eventually get rid of those uh, duplicate categories and uh, that are have nothing in them. But if you go to the site and use it, uh, just don't use those categories there's if you look there's a good category with the data in it and you won't have to use the uh, you'll notice that they're just blank categories down at the very bottom of the list uh, just ignore them until I can get rid of them but I'm not going to delete any more until I know for sure that how to do it so we don't lose any more data so but uh, yeah very lucky that we've lost only one category 
Uh, I hate we lost it, and I'm still working on maybe getting it back. It's still a possibility, but I think it's remote because I did actually delete that, and it appears that it took all that data that was in there with it. So we'll just have to see. I'm still working on it, though. So anyway, you can clearly see the, down, the big downtrend. It looked like we were just going to come back and maybe – test this especially when you got this channel and you get the break and you're moving to a new low my first thought was we're going to test this uh, gap there was a gap on the chart and that's that was the high from yesterday and the yellow is where we opened so i thought we were going to fill the gap and probably go higher no 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 that's why you never trade what you think and you always watch the price action you can see when we got there it just went right through it that was the first clue and it came back and tested it three times. And with that triple test and unable to breach that resistance, uh, we're probably going to go lower. And at that point, you might look for another measured leg like this one. But, man, this thing took off and it never looked back. I mean, we had a few little minor bounces. But this was very easy to find, this trend line on this new channel. Basically, this channel played out the green one. And we went sideways for a while. We just we actually started this real steep one first. And then that rolled over into this, uh, but there's really this yellow channel as well. And it, I mean, it's easy to find that off those first two swings. And if you, uh, you probably would want to look for your measured move here. And you can see we went much lower than that. Uh, we bounced there momentarily, but we continue to go lower. And that's, that, that's generally a sign that, hey, we're probably going to have a, trend, a strong trend day. So let's zoom in here, go through these trades. There's quite a few of them, so I'm going to move along a little rather briskly. Most of these are pretty straightforward. Uh, 7 o'clock came right as we're kind of rounding this top and coming back here. And there is a second entry there, uh, but the signal bar doesn't really qualify. And you've got that channel. Uh, if it was a good signal bar, I might take that anyway. But uh, if you had a good signal bar there, a strong signal bar, maybe you take that trade. But with that channel working down uh, and not a perfect signal bar, you just can't take that. And if you wait just a few minutes, you get a first entry short and then a second entry short that bounces right off the key entry point. Uh, it's also a second entry long. It's, it's really a triple test almost across there, too, with a little failed break lower. you got some support across there. So there's multiple reasons to like that trade. The failed second entry short eliminates the need for it to have a good signal bar uh, if it wasn't for that this trade wouldn't qualify either but i like that trade and that's a quick easy move up um it jumped over there real quickly and notice there's a gap there so you had to really be waiting on actually you want to enter one tick above this but notice how it just gapped and kept going um but your entry would be one tick above this bar so if you tried to use a limit order or anything, you can see where it gapped and kept going. You probably would have got left behind. And that's the that's the danger. If you try to enter with limit orders, you're going to miss all the best trades. So, uh, And the fact that that one just took off like that and gapped over, um, very doubtful that you would have, uh, if you weren't on top of this uh, and you tried to use a limit order, you would have got left behind. So there it is. Nice trade. Uh, I don't know if you'd have got a runner or not. I think you could have maybe got a runner. I'm not sure if it came back here. It depends on where you entered, basically. But you should have got a runner on that one. Uh, if you just entered one tick above the signal bar. Because this doesn't come back and even fill that gap. So you should have got a runner there. And, that's, and, it, and if you get that one runner, and that's what I tell people. People always say, well, only one out of every so many. You, you just have to take a runner on every trade if you want to try to get them. And when you least expect it, you'll get one. And you can see here, if you just waited until you got that big bearish bar, uh, I probably would have exited when it turned. Let's just say you waited till it was one tick below that. Well, there's nine points right there. Easy, nine easy points. And that makes up for a lot of losers. That basically, a rate. If you're, if you're really good at this and you're trading it, 70 80 or even 90 percent which there's a lot of people that can do that um, that probably erases all your losers so keep that in mind uh, you don't want to trade this short though this is too strong um, we do come back and we get a break here um, this channel is working down this is tempting but when it doesn't break higher here that's your clue stay out 
Wait and see if you get a new low after the close outside. And then you just get the triple test. And look how bullish that is. Just take that trade. Then if you didn't like that one, there's a higher low right there. And you know we're probably headed to make a new high. This is a pretty good spiking channel, so fairly strong channel. And uh, I'm not sure if we actually made a new high or not there. Yeah, we did make a new high, and then it's time to reverse. But it didn't matter if we made a new high or not. You still can reverse there. But that play, the rules played out almost perfect there. You get a break, a couple of legs up to a new high, and it reverses. And now we're working lower. And notice the first sell off, and then you're working up. Um, there's technically several swings in here. Uh, but the way I traded this is a first entry, second entry, and it's a failure. Big bearish bar. I like going short there. Takes it a minute, but it drops on down. And notice you get a double top here. So now you got a new eye and you get another first entry, second entry. So you confirm that trend line right here with another big bearish signal ball on a failed second entry long. Uh, there's a lower high here, but you got to go short right into the lows of this move and that's just usually not a good idea um, but then you get the two legs back and the second entry short right here normally I'd tell you you can't take this is your signal bar so generally you usually can't take that bar uh, and prices did tick high, higher here by one tick but that still looks like two legs back to the EMA and a failed second entry long uh, long so I marked that one you could argue maybe it should be green, uh, but I liked it in real time, so I left it red. That's the reason. So uh, I think it's a pretty good trade. So, um, and then we come back, and unfortunately, as good as that bar looks, this is your signal bar. It just doesn't qualify. And uh, notice there is a new swing high there. So you get a first entry and then a second entry right at the key entry point again. Uh, the only reason I made this one green is because you've already had a break in a new low. Uh, but a lot of times you'll get two legs. So I think that one would be uh, the failure. I think it's worth taking. So I liked it. Uh, I did mark it green. It's a little aggressive. And it looks like we're going to trend higher. You get a close outside and you eyes. So now you got another second entry short. But you've also got a triple test across there. And that's really uh, a second entry short, triple test relatively bearish bar this has got a trend or this trend channel has got a break in new high a lot of reasons like plenty of room back to the ema and if you take this one guess what you probably get another runner uh i'm sorry another runner another runner um you probably get another runner there uh there's a lower high here but i think we've moved too far to really consider that one uh you might even look at this as a failure but it doesn't quite get back to the ema and we've already got a new low in place. So I think you're better off just to kind of wait. And then we just start working sideways. So on the green channel, we've got a break and two legs to a new new low. And if you measure them, they're probably pretty close to measured legs. Let's just see. And there they are. Pretty much uh, two measured legs down. It looks like we're going to bounce. Uh, we did get below the target here but sometimes that'll happen then we'll reverse but when you uh, and so you had a triple test down here with plenty of room back to the high there's a little range going on here I didn't mark this one I meant to color or didn't color this one just makes it easier to see but that's a triple test really bullish bar I like that one it takes a minute to work but you end up getting your two legs up and then now you got a, a short here that's also a second entry but You've really got a triple test to the high side here, and um, it's a range. So generally, you'd want to wait on a lower high here. Same thing here, you'd wait on a higher low, but there's no good, and you don't get a. You do get a lower high, but it's not uh, one you want to uh, trade here. To the, and you do get a higher low here, but again, it's not one you want to trade. It's too congested by that time. But it drops on down. And then it works up and gives you a first entry, second entry. And that signal bar is really close. Uh, the problem I have with this trade 
is that it's right back into the support. Maybe there's enough room to get out. I didn't even check it. I just felt it was too risky and I, I didn't like it in real time and I didn't mark it either. Um, there's six ticks there, which is exactly what you need. So there's enough room to scalp out of that with a four tick scalp. But um, being into that support after it failing, uh, it's too big a chance it bounces there and goes higher. Uh, instead, we start another downtrend. And there's a short term one here too. Um, but off we go. And I, there's just no real setups here until we start going sideways. And then we get a failed breakout. And such a bearish bar. I marked this one green. Um, really because it's so close to the lows here. By this time you should have moved that low a little bit lower. And it's real close, but it's been such a bearish move that uh, there's a good chance we're going to push on through that. So I marked it. Uh, it's a little aggressive, but uh, you may trade it. I actually drew this trend line off these lows and pulled it up. And when it turned down there right at the EMA, I, I really kind of like that trade. But there's some reasons to be concerned. It's a little aggressive, so I did mark it green. Drop on down. There's another failure here. And this one's really tempting. But we're not even back to the EMA on either one of those swings. And you got to go short so close to the lows here. And notice it, it did bounce temporarily, but it ends up pushing lower just long enough that was, you would have got out of it before it starts going sideways. But I think that's one you want to skip. Um, and we're working sideways, and you get another triple test. Notice that high. Test it once, test it twice. And that's a relatively bearish bar. And it is a second entry short, although we're not looking for second entries. If you get a set up and it turns out to be a second entry, then you usually want to pay attention to that if it looks like it's a two-legged move. To me, it just looks like a triple test with two legs back to the high. And notice this one takes off. And then we're just kind of chopping along. We didn't quite get the measured move yet based on the range until we finally bounced here. But notice what happens. You get a new high. You can't short that one. You can't short the lower high. So you get a first entry. Technically, there's a second entry right there. Uh, but then we try to go higher again, and we fail. And I really looked at that like a failure. Um, this is so close. I mean, you could really say, I mean, when it's this close, you could look at this like, hey, we got sideways action here. So this is where the downtrend really starts. So first entry, second entry, and it's so bearish. If we break below that, we're probably going to make another leg down at a minimum. And this thing just rockets off. You can tell they got they, they really trapped the longs right there. And if you follow our strategy, you know you don't buy downtrends. Not like this. This is a very strong downtrend. So don't be trying to buy. Not now. I mean, back up here we had one, but uh, it looked like we were going to reverse there. But now, hey, we this thing's just a pure downtrend day. Just stay with the downtrend. So don't be trying to buy right in here. Yeah, it would have worked. This one probably would have worked. Um, there's a couple of them that would have worked, but there's a bunch of them that will fail on you, and it's just not worth the risk. And, of course, the bottom drops out of this one. There's a failure there, but too far away from the EMA. Then we just kind of work sideways. We come back. If this would have broke higher, I'd say go short there. But it's just a continuation of this move, and here's your signal bar, so you just can't really use that bar. Drops down, bounces right off the uh, trend channel line. But again, don't try buying this thing. Just let it go back to the trend line and reset, and then wait for a setup. That's how you want to do this. Don't try buying this. But we bounce. We shoot right through the EMA. Notice how we come after we push through it. Notice how we come back and test it. Perfect price action. And we tried to go higher three times here, so it looks like it's going to be a failure. But this is kind of in the middle of nowhere. There's not a retest of this yet. We're probably headed to here, and this is congestion. So this is a trap. This is almost worth trading here because I guarantee you the shorts had to exit. And you can see how that rocket straight up. That's a sure sign that the shorts were trapped and they're exiting. And probably some that got short up here don't want to give their profits back, so they're exiting. And it, where do, we know where the prices are probably going, right back to the trend line. And that's exactly where they go. 
Uh, unfortunately, you don't get a setup there, and it turns right back down. But notice, he tries to go higher once, twice, and now you're in a spot where you can short this thing. And unfortunately, you don't get a runner here, but you still get a pretty... I mean, you could have gotten a, a small runner, but you don't get one of those big ones. But you still have a chance to get a runner here. And then it bounces, and that one's really, really tempting. But the trend channel's still in place. I'd wait on a lower high, and that comes right here. I like that one. You still could probably argue for that to be... I mean, it's such a strong downtrend. You could probably argue for that one to be green, but I just think you got to wait with that channel working up and no break of it. And you see it tries to go higher and fails, so they probably trap some shorts, and off it goes again. And if you do catch a runner here, it just keeps going until it's finally chopping sideways again. And again, don't try to buy this. Now you might go short. That one's tempting because it is a second entry, but I'd probably wait on a lower high here. And you get one, but the signal bar is no good. And then it bounces again. And that's why you got to wait because this is congestion. This is a tight range and it'll fail and break out both sides. And you just don't know which way it's going to go for sure. But notice what happens. You get two legs up, big bearish bar way away from the EMA and a big downtrend day. Just You can't just take that trade. And if you wanted to draw your short-term channel it's it's probably more like that right there so you get a close outside new high second entry big bearish bar way away from the ma and boom i know you get a runner on this one there's a lower high here and it's really tempting but it's moved too far to treat that like a lower high so that's just a first entry with not right into some support so you can't take that one and this is a spike in channel the thing really really gets strong to the downtrend here People are finally saying, they're finally giving up. The buyers that all kept coming in, probably in here and in here, they're all giving up now. They realize what a dumb mistake we made. And if you draw this channel, you can clearly see you get a new high. You're just working long. Notice I marked all these and marked them green. Once you realize you're in a strong trend like this, any good signal bar that comes back to a confirmed trend line, you can just about trade. Until you, until you don't get one anymore. So, if you this one's two two sideways, but then you got one, two, three. I marked them green, but if you recognize what's going on and you realize we're 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 in a huge spike in channel here on a, I mean very very bearish, and you can see all the little stems how shallow all the corrections are. That's a good sign. Um until we finally get a breakdown here and then we're working back to the other side and again don't buy this and you just don't really get a chance to enter in this there's there's a short right here you did get a break in a new high way away from the ma very bearish and that's like it i mean that's like right at yep i mean that's right at 230 so you know, you technically, if you wanted to be a little aggressive, you can take that trade. The, the better trade would be the lower high, but it, you, it's no setup there. And by that time, too, it's it's 232. I mean, it's still not too late if you'd had a good signal bar there. But uh, if you wanted to enter there, I'd probably say go for it because it's right at the key entry point, And this is a very bearish day. And you can see we closed almost on the very low of the day. Very bearish. Um, so anyway, that's how I saw it today. It's been a while since we've had a, this many trades to talk about and such a good trend and be able to say, hey, we had a really good trading day. Uh, these days have been few and far between lately. So, um, you know, does this mean the downtrend's back? I don't know. This might be the final capitulation and we may bounce out of here uh, looking at that daily chart. But it's just hard to say. I just say for now, the downtrend's not over with. I'd leave it at that. So anyway, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm going to wrap this one up. This is going to wrap up our week. Uh, we'll be back again Monday. I'm done for today. Hope you have a great weekend. This is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.